a big time win interim heavyweight championship has it all sunk in for you yet tom absolutely not i'm not sure it ever will to be honest i still can't believe that on two weeks notice i didn't even know i was fighting and then as i just spoke to you off camera straight away as i started training i pulled my back so my training was unbelievable not great <laughs> my, my training camp for this was almost non-existent but luckily i kept my uh, belief in myself and you know, as I said in the press conference, you're, not, you're definitely not going to win this by watching it on TV. You've got to be in there. And I took the chance. I was in there. I landed the shot. And uh, I'm the champion of the world. Well, I'll ask you this question, and then I'll give way to your biggest fan, Michael Bisping. But sometimes we do come into these fights, and you just wonder, how much of the full story am I getting? How much behind-the-scenes stuff is going on that I'm unaware of? And it sounds like there was a lot for this one for you. Obviously, a short-notice fight, Madison Square Garden. You were telling Bisping before the fight it felt like destiny, but then afterwards you say you were scared uh, going into this fight. So what really was everything going on ahead of this one? Well, I think if you're not scared fighting a guy like Pavlovich in Madison Square Garden, you're absolutely insane. So, um, yeah, I was scared. I openly admit that I'm scared every fight. I'm fine with fear. Like, I'm good with it. Um, but, yeah, the, a lot of stuff went wrong. I didn't have a visa. I obviously didn't have a training camp. Then the small training camp that I did have, I got <laughs> injured a little bit. And, yeah, it was just a big mess. But it paid off tonight and obviously I'm over the moon. It certainly did Tom and as I say I, I do have half a voice ladies and gentlemen so I apologise. Tom I came backstage to see you Yep. and you said to me any last minute advice I yep. said well remember there's a big octagon in there use all of that space avoid the big shots of Sergey. Seems like you ignored everything I said, Tom, and you just went straight at him and thought, let's have a throwdown. Yeah, apparently I ignored my coaches as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it wasn't my... Um do you know what? I think he hit me early on and my, my mouthpiece started to come out. Right. I started readjusting the mouthpiece and then he kind of swarmed on me, so I had no choice really but to, to throw back. Do you know what I mean? And my back was against the fence and I just reacted. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I just, but to be honest, my movement wasn't as great as, as it usually was because I was, I was damn nervous. Yeah, yeah. It took me a little while to get you moving. You did look nervous at I, the start I was of the nervous. Fight, I was, was very nervous. It was making me nervous. Yep. And I got even more nervous when you ate a heavy shot. Yep. Talk to me about that. How did the power feel? He's definitely got a lot of power. Definitely. I shouldn't really be there for shots like that. But when, when you take fights on two and a half weeks, it will affect your confidence a little bit. So, um, yeah, mate, you live and learn, don't you? Next fight, I'm not going to get hit with a shot like that. So, you know, I'm getting more and more experience. I'm still young in the game. And uh, I'm picking up little tips and tricks all the time. Sorry, guys, to crash the party, but Tom Aspinall, I just want to congratulate you. And uh, certainly in the seat that I sit, the most gratifying moment is to see a non-champion breakthrough and become a champion for the first time. And Michael Bisping obviously said what he said all week, and I said he's not saying that because of the friendship. He's saying it because of the film. You're incredible, man. Enjoy it. Thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate all the car kind words from Mike. Like you say, it's not Mike's not some guy in a bar sitting talking who doesn't know what he's talking about. Mike's the former UFC middleweight world champion. Do you know what I mean? He's an absolute legend in the sport. Don't get your head too big, though. Like I'm just too saying. Late, too late for that, but, Tom. <laughs> but too late. what I'm saying is he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's not some, some yeah. guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. So, yeah, I'm very, very happy. Very happy with the way everything went. And, Tom, before you uh, before you came on here, we were speaking a little bit off camera, and I asked you, you know, the, uh, the former president of the United States is sitting here, and uh, there's all of the celebrities out in New York. And I asked you, like, are you able to soak this in? Are you able to be in this moment? Or is it kind of surreal? Do you even know what's going on? And you said that you really you really did. You, you were there for every, every present moment of this fight. I was. And regardless of anything else building up, I tried to put my focus on enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? Because I didn't know if this would be my first and only go. You just never know. Of course. Opportunities don't come around like this all the time. So I just thought, you know, I'm fighting in Madison Square Garden, first time UFC heavyweight title against the, arguably the most dangerous man in the UFC. And I'm going to try my best to enjoy it. I was I was looking at the locker room footage, every, all the celebrities coming in, yeah. and it was cool, man. I really, It was really the highlight of my career tonight. So that's what I was going to touch on, because you are a very humble man, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm such a fan and lots of people Thank are. You. Has it actually sunk in yet? No. You are the heavyweight champ. You are the baddest man on the planet. Never mind boxers. You are, as we say from our neck of the woods, the hardest geezer yep. on the planet. Pretty hard geezer. Pretty uh, hard. <laughs> pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's not sunk in. It, I'm sure it'll take a while. I'm not sure I'm ever going to sleep again at this point. I'm, yeah. Mind is absolutely blown. I saw you take a moment sort of at the base of the octagon before you went down the stairs, but at least for our audience, can you allow yourself to think about what this homecoming is going to be like in the United Kingdom, bringing this belt to your children and all of your adoring fans, bro? Like, you're walking back into your new life on Sunday morning. Honestly, um, I can feel tears coming to my eyes thinking about it, to be honest. Um, 
No, I'll, I'll have to cross so, that bridge when I get to it, I guess. I had to fight security. As you were coming out of the ring of mm-hmm. the octagon, I, I just I had to embrace you. I had Thank to come you. and see you because we've got a good relationship. And as you guys said, it wasn't because we're friends. You know, DC called me on Friday night. I was like, what are you talking about? Why are you so, so high on Tom? Are you just trying to hype the fight? And I'm like, no, look at the performances. Look at what this man is capable of. Mm-hmm. And look at what he did tonight. And as you just touched on there, when, when we had a little hug, you were crying. I was. You were emotional. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I respect other fighters so much. Like, I idolised fighters as a, chil- as a child, and I still do idolise fighters, especially champions and stuff. You had you there. Um, we had Joanna there, who's, who's a good friend of mine as well. And just just to have you guys there, honestly, like, I'm getting choked up again, sorry. It's just... Uh, it's just a lot, and, and I really appreciate it. Well, and now everybody has really seen what uh, Bisping had seen all along, is that this guy is very, very special. You know who else is special? John Jones, and there's no way I'm going to let you walk away from this desk without talking about John Jones. Is there any possibility, Tom, that you can step in there and uh, maybe we don't see, see that Steve Miocic fight? We see you instead again. Oh, I'd love, to, I'd love that fight. Say like, it. There is no... Dis- say it. There's no what? Well, say what? Say it. I'd, I'd absolutely love it. I would no love man it. alive. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'd love that fight. I'd absolutely love it. No disrespect to John Jones. He's one of my favourite fighters ever. Um, but I think I can beat him. Honestly, I, I hand on heart think I can beat him. I just beat that guy on two weeks' notice, and I didn't even have a training camp, so I could I could beat John Jones, yeah, for sure. And it sounds like he had a bad back on there as well. I, so. I had a bad back, yeah. I, I barely trained for this fight at all. Tom, I mean, we always, uh, we always enjoy our jobs. I think we're happy, genuinely happy for all the fighters who come up and have big nights, and I think we're all genuinely happy for you, man, to come in under these circumstances and do what you did in this building is really remarkable. Enjoy that belt. Enjoy the homecoming. Make sure you share some of that with us through social media. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.